it goes against the grain uh, of any state, any government, any country which says we are going to modernize, uh, we are going to develop, um, we are going to become progressive. To uh, ignore a rules-based regime and start delivering instant justice. And, and you're seeing this a lot. Um, to be sure, uh, the defense of the governments involved and the law enforcement agencies involved is that it, this was really an encounter. People tried to escape. We shot them. Uh, in which case, uh, it, just, it is just statistically improbable that so many of these cases are happening in a few states. When you speak of due process, it has to be due process for everyone. It has to be due process for the victim, of course, but it also has to be due process uh, for the criminal, for the person who committed the crime. And I think that by not doing so, uh, you are creating a culture of vigilantism. You are creating a culture of instant justice. And, and that is not going to bode well for civilized society in the long run. Law and order is the cornerstone of civilization. It's the reason why we speak of a rules-based society. Uh, a rules-based society uh, makes sure that there are things that people do, there are things that people don't, and everything happens following due procedure. And it's interesting uh, to discuss a rules-based society and law and order in the Indian context. Um, and we will get to the pressing issue, which is Uttar Pradesh um, and, and the encounter killing that happened there. But, but I think it's important to look at the larger Indian context. Uh, all of us in this country, as many people anywhere else in the world, uh, seem to love vigilantes and not just in the movies. Um, there, there is this sense that instant justice um, is required in many cases. Um, and uh, it's, it's a worrying tendency because it, it, it reflects um, perhaps a reptilian part of our brain functioning uh, in, when, when it comes to ordinary people. And when it comes to uh, the people in power, when it comes to governments and, and the law enforcement agencies uh, willing to pander uh, to such uh, tendencies among the populace, then, then it reflects um, in many ways uh, injustice and you know it, it, it seems weird to say this but uh, vigilante justice in many ways is, is still injustice but but why is this happening I, I think again it's important to understand one uh, very important aspect of this before we get on to Uttar Pradesh and this is the fact that the Indian legal process has this uh, tendency to just go on right there are cases uh, that can be uh, heard for decades. Uh, um, just the other day I was uh, looking at an article that one of my colleagues filed from Uttar Pradesh uh, about a uh, killing by dacoits that happened 40 years ago. And, and, and the case has still not been heard. Uh, the charge sheet has not been filed. The, the investigation, um, no one knows whether it's complete, incomplete. And, and you know, so these are people who've been waiting 40 years for some form of justice. In, in many cases, uh, the victims die, their families lose interest, um, and, and life goes on. And, and, and I think it, it, it's the reason why people are speaking about vigilantism and instant justice. Let's look at it in another context. Look at it in the context of economic offences, especially large corruption cases where politicians are involved, large corruption cases or fraud cases where uh, bank officials or uh, company executives are involved, private company executives are involved. In many of these cases, lower courts have this tendency to not give bail. And the reason they have this tendency of not giving bail, to my mind, is probably because these are people who probably will not get punished because the cases will just go on for decades and decades. But does that mean they should not be given bail, especially uh, when the norm is, especially in offenses like this, that bail should be the rule, right? And, and I, I just think that uh, the fundamental problem of how cases are investigated, uh, the long pendency before courts has made people crave this um, instant justice that is being delivered. And now we'll come to Uttar Pradesh, law and order in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, 
I, I think it fundamentally, and you know, you can accuse me of taking an idealistic view of things, uh, but it goes against the grain uh, of any state, any government, any country which says we are going to modernize, uh, we are going to develop, um, we are going to become progressive, to uh, ignore a rules-based regime and start delivering instant justice. And, and you are seeing this a lot. Um, to be sure, uh, the defense of the governments involved and the law enforcement agencies involved is that it, this was really an encounter. People tried to escape. We shot them. Uh, in which case, uh, it, just, it is just statistically improbable that so many of these cases are happening in a few states. When you speak of due process, it has to be due process for everyone. It has to be due process for the victim, of course, but it also has to be due process uh, for the criminal, for the person who committed the crime. And I think that by not doing so, uh, you are creating a culture of vigilantism. You are creating a culture of instant justice. And, and that is not going to bode well for civilized society in the long run. Um, of course, this is, as I said before, an idealistic view of things. The more pragmatic view is, is that if you have to improve law and order, you have to go out and, and take on these people who commit crimes and, and do away with them in one way or the other. Either you lock them up uh, or you shoot them dead. But, but we are no longer in the Wild West, right? And there is a reason uh, why we have a constitution. There is a reason why we have a penal code. There is a reason why we have the courts. And all of these have to work well, right? And, and if it's not working, then we have to make sure that they work well. The solution cannot be for people to just uh, take a gun and go out and shoot people dead. There's a third aspect to this. And that aspect uh, is, is really the fact that why do governments crave uh, this kind of instant justice? And, and the reason for this is because law and order is very strongly related with investment. Companies like to invest in states, in countries where um, the courts work well, where there is law and order. It doesn't make sense um, to invest in a country or a state uh, where uh, you know the extortion attempts happen every day. It's the reason some states in this country get a lot of investment. It's the reason some states in this country get no investment. So there is a strong incentive for states and countries to ensure that um, law and order is maintained in their respective territories. But that does not mean that you resort um, to violence of exactly the same sort that you're trying to counter.